life. I believe the Lord wants to talk to us tonight. First John chapter 5, beginning in verse 3, or just read one verse of Scripture. Verse 3. Man. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Read it one more time together. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. And would you pray with me together that God will just love us to you? Father, we love you tonight. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, God, and gather together with your people. But I pray, God, that you would open our ears, speak to us, God, that you would give us grace to be obedient, God. Obedient to your heart, not forgetful to your heart, but do it God. God, we believe you, Lord, and minister to this people, God. Meet them where they're at and accomplish your will in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Man, for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. Romans 13, verse 10, the Latin part said, Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And I want to preach to us tonight a simple thought. Uh, if, if I were to ask each of you here tonight, you could probably uh, almost preach it to, to us tonight. But I believe the Holy Ghost wants to just stress it to us tonight and make it afresh and real in our lives. Uh, love is the fulfilling of the law. John said there in our text, this is the love of God that we keep Amen. His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. And then what makes His commandments not grievous? What causes His commandments to not be a burden, to not be heavy and oppressive? He said, it's the love of God. And if I had a simple thought tonight, it would be love removes the burden. You know, I thought as I begin to meditate and to pray, you know, in a marriage relationship, I love Sister Roxanne. You know, it's not a burden to me tonight to be faithful Amen. to my wife. Why is that? Because there's love there. Oh, that's my first love. That's my, the love of my life. And because of that, it's not a burden Amen. to be faithful. It's a delight. It's a joy. It's the rejoicing yeah. of my heart. Love uh, causes me to desire to please, to not want to do anything that would displease or grieve her. And, uh, in the spiritual, I believe that we're not careful. We can get the car before the horse. We can begin to try to do this and make sure we do that. And we shouldn't do those things. But if we're not careful, we can be like the church of Ephesus where we have it all together. But Jesus is saying you love someone against you because you left your first love. Amen. 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 Paul said to Timothy, now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith. Unfeigned. Jesus was asked the question, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to love the, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And then he said, uh, this is what it's all about. This is the, 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 the foundation of it all. If we get all this right, everything else falls into place. And we see that in reality in Christ's life. Christ was our example that we should follow his steps. He was come not on this earth as the divine Son of God, but He came as a man filled with the Holy Ghost. He set an example before me and you of what it is to walk, what it is to honor and to submit to to God. And how the psalmist said of Christ, then said, I know I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. It wasn't a burden for Jesus to honor and obey His Father. It wasn't something that, that was a struggle when He got up in the morning and He said, am I going to go the way of my Father today? Or am I going to go? That wasn't in the question because there was something that was constraining Him. Something that was keeping Him. Keeping him and it was a relationship with His Father. He wanted nothing that would sever that. Nothing that would hinder that. Nothing that would obstruct that. 
with the will of his father. And the only reason and purpose was because he didn't want that relationship to be severed. In the garden, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What cup was he talking about? The cup of sin. The cup of uh, 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 taking our sin upon himself. Where he had to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. Because there was a relationship with his Father. It wasn't a question. It wasn't a burden. It wasn't. It was a constant communion and a relationship with his Father. And it was an example to you and I that, oh, if we'll maintain that, if we'll keep the blood of Christ constraining us, then I tell you what, it's not a burden. You don't have to wake up tomorrow morning and wonder, how am I going to do today? Am I going to follow God? I love him. How they constrained me, but his commandments are not greed. They're not a burden. They're not a drudgery. But it's my delight to do that will of God. What nothing that would separate, that would prevent the least of your favor. Amen. Amen. God help us tonight. Oh, it will maintain that. It will maintain that first love. If we won't let our love grow cold, and I tell you what, it won't be grievous. To do the will of God. Amen. Man, you know, I've known those that are constantly asking the question. You know, is it worth it? Constantly, you know, I'm just, oh, I don't know. You know, maybe I'm, I don't know, constantly tempted. And I'm not talking about a fiery dart. But I'm talking about, you know, constantly thinking, man, I, you know, I could just go out and do this. You know, I could go out and do that. You know what, if we get the love right. We don't have to be fighting all, you know, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to. But if we get the love right. I tell you what, it's, no, I want nothing that would displease my father. You know, if, if I'm constantly uh, tempted to go out and, and be unfaithful to Sister Roxanne, it doesn't need to be that I'm fighting against the unfaithfulness. It needs to be that I stir up the love, that I renew that first love. And if I go back to that, I don't have to worry about how being unfaithful. You know, on my wedding night, there wasn't a question uh, because there was a love there. There was something that was constraining me. And uh, that's why Jesus said to the church in Ephesus, you lost that first love. In the beginning, it wasn't a question of, am I going to go out? Am I going to be a faithful? When we first come to know Him, it was the joy and the rejoicing of our heart. One thing we desired of the Lord, and that when we seek out, that we would dwell in His house. That was the motivation. That was the desire of our heart. Because it was our first love. But Lord, we're not careful, the scripture says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we're not careful in the circumstances, the iniquity, the sin, here and this and that and the other. Uh, we'll begin to that love, we'll begin to wax cold. And it's not long. And we're saying, well, you know, maybe it's not so bad if I do this. I, I don't think that send me to hell, you know. And then it's a little bit farther. A little bit farther. But oh, we will just go back. Amen. To the love, if we'll just go yes, back sir. and fall in love with Jesus the fresh, then oh, we say, Lord, I, I don't know oh, what about this, but Lord, I just want to please you. If that would just please you, if that would hinder, if that would prevent, if that would separate my fellowship with you, God, I don't want any part of it. It's not worth it because I love you. That's right. That was the example that Christ said to you and I, I delight to do thy will. Oh God. Amen. Jude said in Jude 121, keep yourselves in the love of God. Yes. Amen. Iniquity is abounding. We can see that as evident tonight. Iniquity is abounding. And oh, uh, our love, the tendencies for it to grow cold, the love of many will wax cold. Amen. But Jude said, keep yourselves in the love of God. Don't let that love grow cold. Don't let it be, be that the, the iniquity, the sin, the pressures, the, the, the cares of life want to choke out oh, that seed. Oh, that all these things would cause us to, our love to grow cold. But keep yourselves in the love of God. John said in 1 John 4, 19, we love Him because He first loved us. 1 John 3, 1, He said, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. You know, 
We sense that love growing cold. And sometimes we need to just go back and look at what Jesus has done for us. Sometimes we need to just go back and, and take a fresh look at Calvary. Take a fresh look at the price that Jesus paid to, to redeem you and to save you. Uh, take a look at fresh uh, the love that God would send his son to be beaten and mauled and wounded and bruised so that you wouldn't have to go to hell. I'll tell you what, if we could give a fresh glimpse of that, how we would love him because it was love God. relationship, the love of Christ is constraining me. I've fallen in love with Him and it's my delight and my desire to please Him. Oh, I'll tell you what, if we'll get that right, church, you know, I heard one man said, just love God. Do what you want to. Amen. You know what, if you get the love of God, man, everything else just follows our want to is to please the Lord. Amen. Amen. We don't have to say, well, I really want to go do this, but the preacher said not to do it, so I'm not going to do it. We don't have to say, well, I really want to do this, but the Bible says that I go to hell if I do this, I guess I won't do it. And if we get the love right, and what we'll say, Amen. I want to please the Father. Yes, right. I want Christ, the Lamb which was slain to receive the reward of His suffering in my life. The wants of our lives we we'll change. we we'll have renewed desires, renewed wants. Man, it'll be the love will remove the burden. It won't be grievous, but it'll be a delight. Man, if somebody could come to the piano tonight, man, God help us. And open our hearts to you. Man. This is the love of God that we keep His commandment. His commandments are not grievous. Stand with me, Lord, tonight. When the love grows cold, we begin to find ourselves in a wrestling match. We begin to find the pull of the world, the affections, the lust of other things pulling at us. And it becomes a battle that we didn't have when we first got into this thing. What's, what's, what's the problem? What is it? We have lost the first love. Man, could we find a place around these altars tonight and just ask God to renew your first love? Just a fresh, take a fresh glimpse of Calvary. Take a fresh glimpse of the price that Jesus paid. That he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. Oh, I love him because first 